College football is being turned on its ear, everyone. What is going on? And welcome back to yet another North to South show here presented by Touchdowns to Home Runs. Today is Wednesday, June the 9th, and we got an amazing show for you guys because I'm telling you, college football, man, just when you think the 18 playoff and all that kind of stuff is out of reach, then in comes the 12 team playoff. And soon enough, I'm just expecting to say, you know what? We're just going to have a whole March Madness. 64 teams make it, and we're just going to do single elimination and make it whatever you want to call it winter madness, January madness, whatever you want to call it. But in all in all, the segments today that we got, we are going to talk about my initial reactions and my opinions to this so called 12 team playoff that we got in the mix and in the talks about coming into college football. Even this season, I've heard that it could be used as early as this season we're going to talk about my opinions and what I think that this could affect the SEC if this does happen how the 12 team playoff does affect the SEC and then finishing up we are going to talk about my predictions for each and every SEC on CBS games so guys I know today's not a live show I apologize for that last minute things became busy but that doesn't mean that I cannot put out an amazing show for you guys to watch I always make sure to take care of my fans I appreciate you guys tuning in so sit back relax and enjoy this show now these are my favorite segments to make by far the ones where I don't need any notes any stats anything like that like I got my computer screen completely closed right now and I'm just going to talk off the top of my head and I wish I wish so bad that in some way shape or form I could have my other side, like both sides of these two arguments, because I feel good about this 12-team playoff. Like, there's parts of it that I really like, and there's parts of it that I don't like. So if I could split myself into two people and just have an argument back and forth between those two, I'm telling you, this would be the most entertaining video. But sadly, I can't do that, so you're only going to get it through one person. It's only going to be me arguing basically with myself both sides, but it's going to be an amazing video or amazing segment because it's very interesting. Looking at this 12-team playoff, Everything that comes along with it, all the talks and everything about the 18 playoff, you have people who feel really strongly about that happening. You also have the people who feel really negatively about that happening. And I, again, I say this with so many different SEC teams and so many different topics that I talk about where I am in the middle, but it, I truly am. Actually, I wouldn't say that I'm in the middle in this case, but you'll see when I start talking about it. So first I want to talk about what I like about the 12 team playoff. Cause first of all, when I heard that they're looking at a 12-team playoff, it sparks my imagination. Imagination, I like change sometimes. I really do. So hearing that they're thinking about going a 12-team playoff was very interesting, and I was pretty much for it when I started thinking about it straight off the bat. I like it more than eight teams because the more the merrier. The more great games that we could get into, the more teams that we could get into. I love basically the whole reason I want to see a 12-team or 18-team playoff is One, to get that one group of five team in, to get your Memphis, your Cincinnati, your Boise State, your App State, your whoever it is, whoever is the top group of five team in any given year. I want to see them get their chance. Yes, they're probably going to go out against, they probably go out against like your five or six seed in this case because you'd have five through 12 play each other and then you go through and then the one and four seat, one to four seats kick in and then you just basically have an eight seed bracket from there. But I want to see the group of five teams get a chance. I think it would be very interesting, especially like a team like Cincinnati this year. If we could have got them in a scenario where, you know what, they play Georgia, and let's say that Georgia game, that Peach Bowl, moves them on to the next round, and that was a great game. If we could get more games like that, that actually mean something to the teams more than just holding up a trophy at the end and saying, oh, I won the Peach Bowl, I won the Cotton Bowl, and all this. If you actually move on to a next round of the playoff, I'm a huge fan of that. Another big thing that I really like about the 12-team playoff is more SEC teams, and that's been something that I've really wanted for the 18-team playoff because I'm a huge SEC fan, and I know that SEC teams got the best teams in all the country, so I just want to see more SEC teams in the playoff. It's as simple as that. I'm talking, you get a 12-team, 12-team playoff you are getting at least three SEC teams in there like instead of just having Alabama this year you would have seen Texas A&M get in which I think that Texas A&M should have got in regardless but on top of that 12 teams you probably would have got your Georgia and Florida as well any given year the years where let's say Missouri is really good because they have some really good years you have the years where maybe Kentucky takes a step up you start to see these teams these second tier SEC East or SEC West teams that aren't your Alabamas, that aren't your LSUs, that aren't your Georgias, that aren't your Floridas, teams like that actually being able to start up, step up and compete for a playoff spot. I think that that makes 
the regular season of the SEC very interesting because you're not only focused on that number one spot in each division. It also matters about who comes second in the division. Can they be able to fight in for a playoff spot? All different interesting things like that. So that's what I like about the tournament. Just more games, more meaningful games and everything like that. But when you take a step back and you look at it long term and everything like that, I say my argument is I want a 12 team playoff to have more meaningful games. Is that true? Does this playoff really create more meaningful games is the argument that I'm saying. I'm saying in the short run, if you would have implemented this last year and said 12-team playoff, I'd have been like, yeah, I'm all for it. Go for it. But if you're saying this as a permanent answer to fix the college football playoff and everything like that, because you want more meaningful games, you got to take a step back and you just got to look at yourself and say, how does this affect the regular season? How does this affect... The conference schedule or uh, the conference championships and everything like that, all of that kind of fun stuff. How does it end up playing like that? Because you look at your big regular season games, you look at not even SEC. I'm not even going to talk about SEC because that's our next segment. We're going to talk about how this 12 team playoff could affect the SEC. But you look at games like Ohio State, Penn State, a game that the past couple seasons, yes, yet last year might be a bit of an exception because Penn State wasn't the greatest. But you look years prior. And that game pretty much determined who was going to be fighting for a playoff spot and who was not. Because Ohio State and Penn State weren't both going to the playoffs. But you expand that to a 12-team playoff now. Does the loser of that game really matter? Does it really matter if you win or lose that game? Yes, obviously, if you win, you have one less loss. It looks better. You're going to get better seeding. You have a better chance of making it to the playoffs. But does that loss for Penn State or Ohio State in that scenario kick them out of the playoff? Totally. And I think that's what we're going to kind of argue here is that regular season is the bread and butter of college football. And you look at college basketball, comparing it to college basketball, March Madness in the postseason is the bread and butter for college basketball. That's because that's when you have the tournament going on. You have all these games and everything, single elimination, all that fun stuff. And Yes, there are people that watch the regular season. I watch all the Gamecocks game during the regular season. I'll tune into some bigger games like anytime Kentucky or like Duke or Kansas and like Michigan State. Anytime you have two big teams going out like that against each other or Gonzaga or something like that, I'll watch it. But it's not like you're not going to be as involved and as invested in the college basketball regular season because the regular season doesn't matter. If Duke loses to Gonzaga in a regular season game in college basketball, you're not kicking Duke out of March Madness. It's just impossible because they have 64 teams. In college football, when you play only a 12-game regular season schedule and then you have conference championships and that's all you have, those 13 games to get into a 14 playoff, every single game is do or die. And I think that that is where college football is such a unique American sport that every single game means something. Every single game means something to your record every single game means something to the outcome of the team you look at the nfl like the nfl you're going to a 17 game schedule now you have a seven team each conference playoff so 14 teams in total you could lose a game you could lose a couple games basically you're looking around i guess now 11 6 and 10 and 7 is a playoff berth or something like that so you still have lots of room for error you have six or seven losses that you can obtain to still make the playoffs. You look at baseball. Baseball plays 162 games. Like you're going to lose a good portion of that. You're going to be at least like 60 losses or something like that for the average team, 110%. You look at basketball and hockey and everything like that. You're going to lose 10, 20, 30 plus games. It's guaranteed. It's just how the sport works. In college football, if you want to make a playoff run, you have one loss not even one loss sometimes sometimes you cannot lose a single game to make the college football playoff and I think that that's what makes college football such a great sport and everything like that is the regular season games mean so much to the teams and the outcome of the team in the end of the season and everything like that you can't see let's say you take this Georgia and Clemson game if you have a 12 team playoff this year does it really matter who comes out of that game with a win or loss all that matters is that one team is going to have a better seed than the other team because in the end, both those teams are going to make a 12-team playoff 110%. It's just whoever wins that game is going to have the better seed. Does it really affect the outcome? You're making it to the playoffs. All your goal is is to get to the playoffs. Seeding doesn't really matter because if you are truly the best team in the playoff and you really think that you have a serious chance of making a championship run, you'll play whoever. You'll beat whoever because you think you are the best team. So who does whoever winning that game 
mean something? Does whoever wins the ACC championship or does whoever win the Big Ten championship or the Pac-12 championship and all that kind of fun stuff actually mean something now that you have 12 teams? Because I guarantee you, conferences like the Big Ten, they're going to get at least two teams in. You're going to have your Ohio States, your Wisconsins constantly battling out because they're usually at the top of their divisions. You're going to have Northwestern obviously won it last year or won the Big Ten West last year. So you're going to have teams like that. You're going to have your Penn State, Michigan, all those kind of teams. And it's going to be more of a – it's more interesting to see who comes in second place because the Big Ten championship won't mean anything anymore. Will guys even play in those games and everything? Because if you know both of your teams are the top 12 teams in the country, does it really matter who wins that game as long as you were making the playoffs? Are you going to sit some guys because you don't want to risk having them hurt for the playoffs for a meaningless Big Ten championship just for seeding, even though it's going to make minimal difference to whatever seeding you were going to get in the first place? It's just stuff like that. So you look long term. You look short ter term for me. Short term, I like it. I just like the idea of having multiple teams in. I love the idea of having your group of five teams in and they get at least a chance. But you look long run of this. I give you two games of group of five teams in the playoffs and you get bored and sick of it and you just say you know what this wasn't a great idea you know what maybe one team goes out and shocks them I think Cincinnati's a real good team this year but most likely if you get a group of five team and have them go up against your five seed in the college football playoffs so let's say Texas A&M was to go up against Cincinnati I'm taking Texas A&M still the game's gonna be maybe good but you're just gonna see these group of five teams not win the games and just be like what's the point of having them in here when we could get let's say the third best team in the SEC in here instead of the group of five teams so the whole group of five thing scenario initially I do want to see it I want to see it at least once or twice but I think once you get to that third that fourth that fifth that sixth season and everything like that you're going to start to see repetition and that, that these teams aren't making it as far as that you would have liked to see them in these playoffs. They're not playing as competitive games as you would like to see them. Another thing, again, long-term, regular season games is going to shut them down. Conference championship games, it's going to make them less meaningful and everything like that. Basically, this 12-team playoff is just trying to go at March Madness and make more of a moneymaker in your postseason, although you already have... Probably the most exciting and thrilling regular season out of any sport in all the United States. of Maybe even the world. The regular season in college football is one of a kind because of the scarcity of the spots for postseason appearances in terms of being able to compete for a national championship. Yes, there's still postseason spots and let's say bowl games and everything like that. You could go play in the Tony the Tiger Bowl or you could go play in the Belk Bowl, the Birmingham Bowl, all those fun things. But only four teams get to go to the playoffs. And I think that that's what makes the regular season so interesting. So that's kind of my initial opinions on how it looks in college football. I'd be for it. I'd be interested in it. And I feel like a lot of people would the first couple seasons, but then I think it would just get repetitive and you'd see a die off of the regular season. You'd see it just become less exciting and you just see maybe the competition of games not being as exciting as you initially thought. So 12 team playoff, Short run, yes. Long term, no, is my opinion. Let's talk about this in more SEC specific terms and everything like that, because how would the college football, the 12 team college football playoffs, should I say, and all these things that are being pitched affect the SEC? And is it a good thing for the SEC? Would it hurt or hinder the SEC? Or would it be a positive something that SEC fans want, something that the conference in general wants, something that the teams want and everything like that? Because I think that there are a lot of internal and external factors and everything like that that we got to think about this. And that's what I'm going to kind of go through. I want to look at how will the 12-team playoff affect the SEC externally and internally at the same time. And I think you get different perspectives from the fans, you get different perspectives from the teams itself, different perspective from the conference. Again, I'm just a fan speaking my opinion and everything like that. I'm not saying that this is the players or teams' opinions or anything like that, but this is just how I see it. So I want to talk externally first, and I think that a 12-team playoff externally would be good for the SEC. And by what I mean by externally is outside of the SEC, so going up against teams like Ohio State and Oregon and your Clemson, all those other conferences that you have to compete with and everything like that, externally, this does look good for the SEC because all in all, the SEC is going to get at least three teams in the playoffs, probably four on average a year 
in the playoff if you have a 12-team playoff. I look at this season, you're getting Alabama, you're getting Texas A&M, you're getting Florida, and you're getting Georgia all in the playoff this season. I see no problems with that. There's no one that's going to argue with that. Those four teams easily make the playoffs. You go back a couple years ago, that Alabama team, that whatever lost to LSU and yes they did lose to Auburn but you probably see them still squeak into the playoffs and everything like that you're gonna have LSU you're gonna have Georgia might even have Florida that season still squeak in you're gonna have Alabama in and there's so many different teams that constantly I'm looking at Ole Miss this season I'm looking at you're like LSU this season could possibly compete for that 12th or 11th spot something like that depends on how they do I look at like Florida competing for that spot I think Texas A&M, Georgia, and Alabama are all locks for this season if they were to do this 12-team playoffs right now. But all in all, the more teams you're able to get in the playoffs, how could that possibly be bad for your conference? How could that possibly look bad? Because I think the SEC has the best teams, and I think it will be a good proven thing that when you put all these SEC teams into the playoffs and they have to pool together with your like Iowa States and they got to go up against your Oregon's and they got to go up against because they're not going to play like your Ohio State's Clemson's and Oklahoma's are going to be in the top four so you're not going to play them in the first round but when you see a majority of SEC teams maybe four out of eight teams in that second round I think that uh, looks really strong for the SEC because I think you could have really competitive games and good games and beatable games against, again, your Iowa States, your Oregons, your group of five teams, your North Carolinas this year, your Wisconsin's, teams like that, those second teams in all those conferences, I think that you could definitely compete with and beat out to get four SEC teams in that eight spot. So why is it a bad thing? Why should it even be an argument that the SEC, this would be a bad thing for the SEC if we can get more teams into the playoff and just look more competitive and just become even bigger of a beast than the SEC already is. Internally is where it looks bad. And internally, I think for the fans and everything like that is where a 12-team playoff really affects the SEC season. And last season, man, you look at an all-SEC slate, you look at an all-SEC season where you're just constantly going up against the best conference each and every single week, and you know each and every single game means something to your final record and your chances at an SEC championship and an SEC postseason and all that kind of fun stuff, a college football postseason story, sorry, and getting into the playoff and everything like that. Why do we love our CBS games, which we're going to talk about in a second, we're going to do my predictions for who I think will be in each CBS game. Why do we watch those CBS games? Why do we watch the ESPN night games that the SEC teams get into? Why do those games mean so much to us? Why do the rivalry games and everything like that mean something to us? Because in SEC regular season and everything like that, you usually only get one mistake to still sever your season or savor your season, whatever you want to call it, to protect your season from still being able to go on and make a championship run. You look at Alabama and Auburn. It's usually one or the other. Whoever comes out of that game is going to have a postseason appearance. Now, I know 2017 is obviously an outlier because Auburn wins that game, but Alabama still moves on because Auburn didn't play well in the SEC championship and then Georgia and all that confusing stuff. But you look at games like that, Alabama-LSU. It's not Alabama and LSU both going to the playoffs, whoever wins that game. Um, it's whoever wins that game, one Playoff opportunities is still alive and ones isn't. You look at games like Florida, Georgia. One team, whoever wins that game, their playoff hopes are still alive. Whoever loses, I'm sorry, but have fun in the Cotton Bowl. Have fun in the Fiesta Bowl. Have fun in the Tony the Tiger Bowl or the Cheez It Bowl. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's what makes the SEC regular season so great. That's what makes college football the regular season so great. And I kind of touched on this, talking about my whole how I think this impacts college football, but especially the SEC, man. These games that we all love, these Georgia-Florida games, these Alabama-LSU games, these Texas A&M-LSU games, these games like... I know I think that I'm high on this game this season. I'm just going to throw it like Florida, Missouri. I know you might not care about it this season, but I think it will be an interesting game. But all your certain rivalry games and that, those games that you circle on your calendar, like Alabama, Florida, stuff like that, doesn't matter if you have a 12-team playoff. It matters in some sense where you get a win in your win category and the other team gets a loss. And obviously, you still have – I think the main thing is – if you lose those games, you still have a chance at going to the college football playoff. You could lose back-to-back -back weeks. Alabama could go out this season, lose to Florida, lose to Ole Miss back-to-back -back weeks, but then still have a chance to go on, 
beat Texas A&M, beat LSU, beat all these other teams in the SEC, and still make it to the playoffs. Does that make any sense? I'm not saying Alabama will lose those games, but let's say that did happen. Alabama can still make the playoffs. Do you think a team that loses two games in SEC play deserves to make it to the playoffs? It just sounds so absurd, and it's just like, why do those games matter? Why do we play these games? Why was that Alabama-Florida game such a big deal to us? Because Alabama lost. Florida was able to go out and beat Alabama. Why did it mean anything, though? Because Alabama was still able to make it to the playoffs. Why did the Ole Miss game mean anything if Alabama was still able to make it to the playoffs? And all these different scenarios. And the SEC championship, too. It's not just the regular season. I talk about the SEC championship. Whoever makes it to the SEC championship with a 12-team conf- uh, playoff is going to make the playoffs, no doubt about it. So why would you risk your best players going up against the other team's best players? Because we all know the SEC is a physical con- conference. You're playing up against NFL talent each and every single day that you go up, touch the grass, and go on the field, go on the gridiron. Why would you risk your starting quarterback? Why would you risk your star left tackle? Why would you risk your star wide receiver? And all these kind of things. In this meaningless game now, all you get to do is raise an SEC trophy at the end. You get shirts that say you're an SEC champion. You get a ring and everything like that. But that doesn't affect your postseason appearances and your postseason opportunities and everything like that if you lose that game. And that's where I think it really affects everything because Alabama-Florida this season would have meant nothing. You would have gone LSU-Georgia. Two years ago would have meant nothing. You look at all these great SEC championship games. You look at your, like, I know this was before the playoff era, but some of your Alabama, Georgia SEC championship games. If you had a 12 team playoff back then, that game means nothing. It doesn't matter that Georgia lost that game because they're both going to the playoffs. It doesn't matter. The game doesn't have as much magnitude. Maybe Georgia sits a few guys. Maybe Alabama sits a few guys, and you just all in all get a less exciting game because you're missing your star players and everything like that so externally I think that for the SEC it looks good that you're going to get multiple teams constantly in the playoffs and you're constantly going to be competitive but for the SEC schedule and the SEC play that we all hold dear to our hearts and the Saturdays that we love because we know on any given Saturday your team's hopes and dreams can be ripped from you or you could go out and rip some other team's hopes and dreams away from them they'll all be gone because you can lose two games You could lose a game, you could lose a big-time game, and it would mean absolutely nothing because you could still cakewalk to the playoffs. So that's my opinion on how it would hurt the SEC. I'm going to say it would hurt the SEC because the culture of the SEC is you're playing in the toughest conference, you get no mistakes, you have to get through this conference completely clean to be able to go make it to the postseason. That would be ripped away if we have a 12-team playoff. So I'm saying all in all, a 12-team playoff would hurt the SEC. Now moving on to something that's going to be a bit more fun and relaxing and everything like that other than the last two segments because obviously we're talking about the 12-team playoff and everything like that. And that gets what's more intense because a lot of people feel really passionate about how they think college football should be run and everything like that. But here in this segment, we're going to do talk about what I think the SEC on CBS games will be because we all know the SEC on CBS games are the best game of each week for the SEC Anytime you just hear that theme music and everything, and I know it's going to go very soon because of the whole ESPN contract, but let's all enjoy and savor the couple years that we have left with the SEC on CBS. So I'm here to do my predictions today for week by week. What SEC on CBS games will we have in some days? There's obviously double headers. There are already a couple games that have been pre-decided. So, but for all the open slots, I have predictions. So it's going to be a great segment, guys. Let's start off with September the 18th, obviously, CBS on, or SEC on CBS S doesn't start till September 18th, and this game is already decided, obviously, we already have Alabama at Florida, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 3-30 game, the biggest cross-divisional game of the year, I don't think that anyone's going to have an argument with that, obviously, the SEC championship last season, it's going to be a high magnitude game, I think, it would be a bit weaker if Alabama or Florida was traveling to Alabama, but the fact that you have Alabama traveling to the swap, it's going to be a great game. So nothing more to say about why this game was chosen because it was already chosen. I can't change it, and I wasn't going to change it. Alabama, Florida, September 18th. September 25th. Interesting, very interesting week. I have my honorable mention of Tennessee versus Florida. I'm going to have honorable mentions for some of these for the less obvious ones. I'm going A&M versus Arkansas in Arlington for my CBS 330 game. 
we'll get to see how Texas A&M does early in the season before, obviously, the big Alabama versus Texas A&M game. And I think that Texas A&M is going to have a lot of media attention on them this year. So getting them in Arlington, obviously, this game is going to be played at Jerry's World AT&T Stadium. And I think Arkansas could be a competitive team this year. This is an early season SEC showdown where Tennessee, Florida, obviously Tennessee's coming in with a new coach and everything, but you just showed Florida last week. And my prediction is that they lose that game. So I think Arkansas versus A&M will be the more interesting game. And obviously you play that game in a neutral site at the Cowboys Stadium. All in all, I think it just makes for a better storyline and everything like that. So I'm going September 25th. We are going to see A&M versus Arkansas in Arlington. October 2nd, this was a really, really tough one. My honorable mention was Auburn at LSU. I was really, really close to putting that one. And honestly, I kind of feel bad for not putting that one because I feel like I talk about this game too much. But I honestly think that it would be the best game of this week. Ole Miss traveling to Alabama. Obviously, we all know what happened last year. is a very close and entertaining game. It's going to be a bit different when Matt Corral and Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss have to travel to Bryant-Denny Stadium. But still, I think that that could be a really competitive game. Even though Auburn LSU historically are always really, really close and entertaining games, excluding last year, obviously, because that was a blowout. I think that you go see Alabama. You go to Alabama because... From what I see, there isn't going to be. There's only one other time that you're pretty much going to go to Alabama this season. So take your SEC, uh, SEC on CBS 330 slot to Alabama to go see them play Ole Miss. And then Auburn LSU was a really, really tough choice. I, I would not complain if that was a CBS game that week either. October 9th, we get two games. We get the 330 game and then we get prime time at 8 o'clock. So interesting here. 3.30 game, so the 3.30 game is obviously going to be the second best game of the week because primetime, 8 o'clock, is going to be your best game. They weren't tough choices at all. 3.30, I have UGA going to Auburn. Now, we all know UGA going to Auburn, that's a big rivalry game, and usually you see something crazy happen at Jordan-Hare, so I don't know how you pass up on that game. Georgia is coming in, obviously, as one of the college football playoff favorites out of the SEC this season. Auburn's coming in with the new head coach. It's going to be an interesting road test probably Georgia's first big big road test that they go on so it's going to be interesting there get them at 3 30 3 30 and then at eight o'clock of course you're going to have Alabama Texas A&M probably the biggest SEC game of the whole season so there's no further exp explanation needed on why that game is the eight o'clock game there's no further explanation on why UGA at Auburn is a 3 30 game take those two 110 percent I would bet some serious money that those are the two games on October 9th October 16th, we also have an SEC on CBS doubleheader. This time, we have a 12 o'clock game, and we have a 3.30 game at 12 o'clock, so this will be the second best game. I'm going Ole Miss at Tennessee, an interesting game here, a game that you don't usually see that often. Ole Miss and Tennessee get each other in the rotating schedule, of course. Ole Miss traveling to Tennessee. We see how Josh Heupel does this season and everything at Tennessee. You got one of the best offenses in all of the SEC going with Ole Miss going to Tennessee, and obviously Tennessee is not an easy place to play, just looking at all the other games, I think that this game just is interesting and intriguing just because this is an eye test game that you're in I match up that you don't usually see Tennessee and Mississippi go on, going up against each other that often. So I think that's the easy choice to take at 12 o'clock. And then at 3.30, I got Florida going to LSU. Obviously the best game of the whole SEC last season. These are going to be two competitive teams this season, two very talented teams that just weren't able to get it, finished it out last season. Obviously, LSU had a lot of a weaker season than Florida, but Florida was so close to making a run. But I think these are two very evenly matched teams, and that will be definitely the most interesting game. And, of course, you go to LSU. I think that's the only game I got on here going to. Ah, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's This isn't the only game I got at LSU this season for the SEC on CBS slate, but I think that this will be definitely the best game of that week. October 23rd, I got an honorable mention of Tennessee at Alabama. I just think Alabama's going to run Tennessee out of town there, but it's still a rivalry game, still deserves a mention. I got LSU at Ole Miss. You're going to hear these two teams' names a lot, and I apologize, but they honestly just fall into weeks where their games are the best of the week. LSU at Ole Miss, this was a close game. I'm pretty sure this was like the last week or one of those makeshift weeks at the end of the season it was a close game last year 
just there was no other game. And I feel like these are two evenly matched. These are two teams that are going to be duking it out for like the third or the second spot in the SEC West. So I don't see how you put any other game above that, especially when there's no really headline highlight matchup this week. So I think LSU at Ole Miss traveling to Ole Miss will be the best game of this week. October 30th, it's already decided UGA at Florida. Don't need to talk about that. Obviously, the big game in Jacksonville. It's going to decide who wins the SEC East. So no further explanation needed there. November 6th, honorable mention of Mizzou versus UGA. I think Mizzou might be a competitive team this year. I think Mizzou might be able to give Georgia a scare. I'm not saying that Missouri will go out and win that game, but I think that they could make it a competitive game early. So that's a game to definitely keep your eye on. But all in all, I don't know how we don't go LSU versus Alabama. Last time they played in Alabama, LSU won. Obviously, lots of things have changed since then. But just seeing those two, two teams' logos, in your commercial the week before or something like that just gets you pumped for the game no matter who or what players are on that team so I don't know how you don't go to LSU Alabama there November 6th I think that's the easy choice there November 13th I have an honorable mention of Tennessee and UGA I just think that that again is a game that you look at rivalries and everything like that that's a good rivalry game I still think Georgia is a way better team in this scenario and they'll probably easily win that game but my game for this week, I have Texas A&M going to Ole Miss. Again, two teams that you've heard a lot of so far. Texas A&M, this was the game that we missed out last year, and this was actually scheduled for an SEC on CBS game. I think COVID screwed it up and everything. I can't remember. I think it was Texas A&M who had the COVID issues. I could be completely wrong on that, but one of those two teams had COVID issues. Texas A&M, Ole Miss. Texas A&M could be going for an SEC West championship at this point and traveling to Oxford. I think that that could be a game that is stopping them in their way from getting to that SEC championship. Obviously, this all depends on what happens in that Texas A&M Alabama game. But I think that this is by far the best game of the week, especially when my honorable mention is just Tennessee at Georgia. This is going to be the most competitive game of the week. November 20th, we have an honorable mention of Arkansas at Bama. And I was close. I was really, really close to putting this as the game. But I was just like, I think Alabama's going to win this game too easily. So I'm going Florida at Mizzou. Florida at Mizzou. I think it's going to be a competitive game. It's going to be interesting. Obviously, Florida is coming. These are the two teams who I think either one of these teams is going to finish out as the second best team in the SEC East. I still think Georgia has got that number one top spot. And I just think it's going to be a competitive game. Obviously, it'd be a bit different if Mizzou was traveling to Florida. But Florida has to make the long trip all the way to Columbia, Missouri. Two offenses, two young offensives, two young quarterbacks going at it. I think it's going to be a very interesting game over there in Columbia, Missouri. So I'm going with that as the CBS game on November 20th. Oh, I also had another honorable mention for that one. And that was my Gamecocks taking on Auburn. And I just threw that in there because that is honestly the game even more maybe than the Clemson and Georgia game that I'm the most excited for. Just so many great storylines there. Mike Bobo coming back to South Carolina. Obviously, Tank Bigsby and Marshawn Lloyd going at it for the first time head-to-head, -head, who are obviously two big recruits that South Carolina were going after. I know this isn't things that pop into your head for a average SEC fan, but for a South Carolina fan like me, this is a game that I am really, really excited for. And obviously, we beat them last year and probably our best game definitely our best game all of last season so yeah, I'm excited for that one I'm not saying that it's going to be in the CBS slot just had to shout that out November 26th we got Missouri at Arkansas and this is a Friday night game so November 26th is the Friday November 27th is the Saturday Missouri at Arkansas you obviously saw the game last year it was an amazing game I'm guessing that this isn't going to be your main broadcast crew. Obviously, I'm talking about with Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson. I don't think that that's going to be this game. I think that they take the Saturday game. But I still love the idea and to have it on a Friday night and to CBS cover it. I don't need to explain this game because it is already chosen. November 27th. This was a really, really, really tough one. My honorable mention is the Iron Bowl. It sounds so whack, especially with Alabama going to Auburn. You know, that's always bound to be an amazing game, and it was so hard. But I was just like, this Texas A&M LSU game, I really, really feel good about going to LSU. It's going to be a great and competitive game, and I just feel like this will be the better game. I think Alabama's a better team than Auburn this year, although you can never count Auburn out when they're playing at Jordan-Hare. Just Texas A&M, LSU on paper to me looks so good this season, and I cannot wait for that game. I think it's going to be more competitive. And Jeff Lee, if you're trying to get the best game of each week, not necessarily the most eye-catching game. Obviously, you see Alabama and Auburn 
going at it, you're going to think, oh my gosh, it's the Iron Bowl, that has to be CBS, but if we're talking about best game, I think that Texas A&M LSU game is going to be a better game than Alabama at Auburn. So that is my show for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Again, I'm sorry that I had to pre-record this, but I appreciate you guys still showing up. We will be back live on Monday, releasing the clips tomorrow, obviously. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like the video down below, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching, and definitely come back next time.